Do you remember the time when Colby was the most popular player in Survivor history? As women wanted to date him, men wanted to be him, and people were naming their dogs after him. So when the time was right, made one more attempt. Well, don't worry, that's not what today's video is about. Throughout his time on Survivor, Colby had a huge fall from grace in terms of popularity and his ability to play Survivor. The awkward moment when you find out your idol, the literal person you looked up to, is a shell of their past self. In Survivor Heroes vs. Villains, Colby Donaldson was the perfect embodiment of Superman in a fat suit. And I don't think that made anyone as upset or angry as it made Jeff Probst. I'm not annoyed with you, I'm ready to get to the challenge. Free offer of chocolate, I'm just don't curious. It. Let's go. I got the message, brother. We'll go when I'm ready. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. If that introduction wasn't big enough hint, then I'm sure the title of the video and the thumbnail gave it away. But today, we are going to be breaking down the spookiest, the freakiest, the angriest, the most terrifying Jeff Probst moments in Survivor history. We aren't going to be holding anything back with this one as we're going to be diving into the many quits, challenge failures, and much more in today's video. We may even get to the bottom of what the monster really is in Season 41 of Survivor. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe with the bell turned on so that you never miss any of my future Survivor videos. But with that said, let's get right into it. Terrible in this challenge so far. You touch two, cat in the water. Colby blaming everything on his big brother. No shot at immunity tonight. I know. Number 10. When making this list, I did my best to ensure we didn't have any seasons appear more than once. But there are just some seasons where you can just tell the man, the myth, the legend is in a bad mood and not having any of the BS. One of those seasons came in the fall of 2014 with Survivor San Juan del Sur. Honestly, we could have a list filled with angry Jeff Probst moments from the 29th season of Survivor, but for the sake of making a quality video, we're going to be sticking to only having two of those moments. The one we are starting with right now is in the early parts of that season with a great negotiations taking place for another flint and some extra rice. Fire and food is how you survive in Survivor and stay strong for all those challenges. Well, the Hunapu tribe was abusing their rice privileges and not being smart with their flint, leaving to a disappointed and yet angry Jeff Probst. So in fairness of the game and in fairness to the Koyopa tribe who's playing the way you should, the penalty for that has to be just. Number 9. We have a very quick but an obviously spooky Jeff Probst moment during day 5 of Survivor Samoa. We are talking about a particular castaway that had an abrasive personality and made a bunch of controversial statements. No, I am surprisingly enough not talking about this guy, but instead talking about Ben Browning. During the early days on Foa Foa, Ben was fighting with everyone as he was unimpressed that his tribe didn't vote him as their leader. On day 5, the tribes competed in a very physical challenge for reward and immunity. For throwing Yasmin into the fence and kicking Russell Swan in the legs, Jeff had no choice but removing Ben from the challenge. You know things got ugly when Jeff was forced to step in during a challenge that was meant to be physical. Stop! Ben! Out of the challenge! Ah! Ah! First time in the history of Survivor. Somebody's been pulled out of the challenge. Number 8. Do you remember every moment from Survivor Fiji? My guess would be not a chance. Do you remember Lisi from Survivor Fiji? Well, let me remind you. Photo. Lisi's so excited, she takes a face plant. The major reason I place Survivor Fiji in the very bottom spot of my Survivor retrospective rankings is because of the haves versus have-nots twist that gave one tribe complete luxury and the other tribe absolutely nothing. Lisi was super lucky in getting placed on the dominating Moto tribe, however it was pretty apparent that she was not able to adjust to the elements. During a typical tribe swap, Lisi was left on her own, making her obviously be sent to Exile Island. Nope, being a recruit, Lisi thought this meant she was eliminated from the game, and she was actually really happy with this decision. There was an ongoing discussion throughout the entire season that she wanted to quit Survivor or maybe stay in the game, and this left Jeff in a really bad mood needing to deal with players that didn't even want to be there. Number 7. This is where things start to get a little more spicy as we see the true rage from Jeff Probst as we fast forward to the year 2013 with Survivor Blood vs. Water, and on day 7 we were given some of the most iconic moments from that season with a bunch of yelling at Brad Culpepper and Colton Quinn. 
quitting Survivor. You're gonna need to get used to me discussing players quitting Survivor on this list, as that is easily the thing that pisses Jeff Probst off the most. After failing to form a majority alliance in the first couple of days of Blood vs. Water, Colton quickly went back to his old, whiny habits from Survivor One World. After not seeing a way out of the situation, he decided to walk out and quit the game on day 7. This blew Jeff's mind and caught him saying things that he would later regret. Colton got pulled from the game in his original season due to a medical emergency, but Jeff was so angry about Colton quitting this time around that he described Colton as a two-time survivor quitter. This is one of the few times Jeffrey has taken things a little too far as he later made a statement saying he was wrong to describe Colton's first appearance as a quit. To watch adventure, it doesn't necessarily mean they really should get up off the couch. And I'm now convinced that Colton is the guy who never should have got up off the couch. Number 6. Abby Maria Gomez I love when Survivor players describe how she is in real life. Everyone just says, she is great. She is Abby. Survivor Philippines is a bright light and a very likable season in the dark ages of Survivor. But what is obviously not likable is how Jeff Probst felt about Abby for the majority of the game. I will never understand why every few years Jeff will find one player and pick on them every chance he gets during the season. Jeff Probst makes a comment to Abby about always sitting out during the challenges even though her tribe keeps winning and someone needs to sit out and he gets pretty saucy during tribal council. Denise, do you think Abby can win this game if she gets to the end? I don't think she can win this game. Number 5 Sometimes Jeff can visibly be seen angry for an entire scene, and sometimes the spooky factor is only for a few moments. The relationship Jeff Probst has with the players is pretty obvious as he always needs to be in full control, and sometimes he needs to remind those players that he has all the power. We saw a very brief and effective instance of this during Survivor Worlds Apart with Dan and Sharin. Everyone probably remembers the uncomfortable situation when Sharin describes the life she had growing up, and Dan said he had a very similar situation with being an adopted child. However, what I'm actually referring to is a moment most people tend to forget. During the Worlds Apart reunion, when Jeff Probst once again gets intense and gives us behind the scenes proof exposing Dan. A little backstory, Dan went to the media describing how Survivor didn't edit his character properly. And while Jeff took things a little too far during the reunion show, you can tell this made Jeff extremely angry. My scenario really isn't much different than hers. So you had domestic violence in your upbringing? I'm a, I'm an adopted child. Number 4. Remember at the start of this video when I said we were going to be talking about Survivor Sam Wandel Sir twice? Well here it is, the second moment on the list and this time it has nothing to do with negotiating with Mr. Probst. Touchy Subjects was an infamous Survivor challenge that gave countless amazing moments where the players were forced to be honest about what they really thought about each other. However, the challenge was finally broken by the players in the 29th season of Survivor as the majority alliance was just picking and choosing who was going to win the reward challenge. In retaliation, Jeff decides to just end the challenge right there in a very angry manner and the challenge has never returned since. First time ever. This is crazy. A fivesome just gonna give it to somebody. Number 3. For obvious reasons, the majority of the community views Survivor Thailand as a bottom tier season, and it's pretty obvious that most of you watching my videos feel the exact same way. As during my daily Survivor questions, I asked what's the worst season of all time, and almost every comment said Survivor Thailand. But if there's one redeeming quality of that season, it's the attack zone challenge, and specifically how hilarious it is to watch Jeff constantly throw people out of the challenge. I feel like this is one of those times where it's better to show and not tell, so in Enjoy the amazing Survivor Challenge. You're out of the game. Grab Clay around the throat. You're out of the game. What are you doing? You were in the water. You're nowhere close to the attack zone. Number 2. People work way too hard to get casted onto Survivor to have players just walk on and decide they're going to quit the game. We are talking Survivor Nicaragua with the infamous double quit episode where Nayanka and Purple Kelly decide to walk away from Survivor. On day 28, leaving only 7 players remaining in the game. I've tried to defend them a little bit in the past as Nayanka was one of the only interesting characters on that season and it really wasn't fair from the producers to not give Purple Kelly much clothes, but as a fan who dreams of one day playing Survivor, this hurts. This hurts a lot to watch. And keep them here, Tribal Council. They'll be a reminder to you guys when you come back in here as part of the jury of the decision you made to quit. Number 1. Sometimes Jeff Probst is angry and it feels undeserved, and sometimes he gets angry and that anger is completely warranted as he's standing up for what's right. The times Jeff Probst got the angriest is also the times when it was the most deserved, and 
Survivor Game Changers with Jeff and Island of the Idols with Dan. These are tough moments in Survivor history and I always hate when I need to bring them up in my videos as this show is supposed to be super positive but sometimes things get way too dark. And at the end of the day, I think it's better to include them on this list instead of pretending they don't exist at all. Although looking back, Jeff could have handled these situations maybe a little better. He is always learning and at the end of the day, I truly feel he's trying to do the best for us, the people watching at home, and for the castaways playing the game. Whether it is quitting Survivor, denying the luxury of eating chocolate bars, Jeff has a bunch of spooky moments throughout his Survivor history. However, if you want to see things in a more positive light, then you should click right here to see my video on Jeff Probst's perfect Survivor moments.